Hi, welcome to my things to know about traveling to Cuba video. Here are my top 10 tips on what you need to know before and during your trip to Cuba. So let's get started. Number one, visa and documentation. First things first is you need a visa to get into Cuba. In the UK where I live, you can get this via the Cuban Embassy by post. This costs £39 by postal order. This is valid for a 30 day stay and can be extended for an extra 30 days when you're in Cuba. Also, for UK citizens, you will need a passport that is valid for at least six months after your departure from Cuba. For US citizens, you will also need a visa and this will cost between $50 to $100. You can get this via your nearest Cuban embassy or via a travel agency or through your airline at the departure airport. Another thing you must have is travel insurance, but this wasn't checked when I went through Cuban customs. I would also recommend you have a copy of your passport and your travel insurance on your phone and printed out just in case. Two, money. There are two currencies in Cuba. One is used by locals and this is called the CUP or COUP and the other is used by tourists and this is called the CUC or COUC. One COUC equates to roughly one US dollar. I wouldn't bring US dollars with you to exchange because you'll be charged an extra 10% tax. I brought British pounds, uh, which was easy to exchange, but you could also bring euros. I'd recommend you exchange your money at the airport. As soon as you come out the international's terminal, um, it is on your right hand side. The queues there are really long, so I'd recommend if you're traveling with someone that they go ahead and queue up while someone else waits for the luggage. Make sure the notes you bring with you to exchange have no markings or anything scribbled on them as they won't be accepted. You can exchange your money at the banks, but I found the exchange rate slightly better at the airport and also it saves you time. American credit cards and debit cards aren't accepted and payment by card is rarely accepted in Cuba. So I'd recommend you bring plenty of cash with you. I'd roughly budget around 100 cook per day, depending on what you're doing. And I'd also bring extra um, as I found, I found it to be more expensive than anticipated. Booking your travel and accommodation in advance ha saves you having to pay for it when you're there and carrying extra cash. Three, the internet. Access to the internet in Cuba is limited and slow. To gain access, you need to buy an internet card, which you can buy from any of the ex offices, which are found in most towns and the, at the airport. To join the internet, you need to select the network you want to connect to and then scratch the back of the card to reveal the password, which you would type in along with the username when connecting. You can also buy these internet cards from hotels, casas and locals. However, you may end up paying a bit more and just make sure that it hasn't already been used by checking that the password is still concealed. You can access the internet at specific Wi-Fi hotspots, such as a park or square. It's not too hard to miss as you'll see most people on their phone. You can also use it at certain bars, restaurants, hotels, casas and major airports. Number four is accommodation. You can stay in hotels, but I prefer to stay in Casa Particulares. This is accommodation that is owned by locals that rent out all or part of their home. I found it was a lot cheaper and you were directly helping local people. The Casa owners were friendly and helpful. They can help you arrange excursions, travel and onward travel. Most of them spoke English, some better than others, and some had Wi-Fi, but it wasn't very fast. I booked all the Casa Particulares I stayed in in advance online via Airbnb and Booking.com. I found it really easy and you can message the Casa owners in advance just to let them know of your arrival time, etc. The castes generally serve breakfast, which costs about five CUC and includes similar things such as eggs, fruit, juice, coffee, and in some instances I was able to get some tea. Again, I kept a picture of the booking reference and address on my phone because of lack of internet. All the hotels and castes had 110 and 220 voltage plugs. Number five, apps. I would recommend you download maps.me and download the map of Cuba as it allows you to navigate offline. I'd also suggest you download Google Translate and download Spanish so you can use it offline because not everyone speaks English. And you can also use a camera function on that app um, to translate menus, which is really useful. 
Another really good app is Pocket. This enables you to download web, uh, web pages and websites that you can look at later. Really useful for restaurants and things to do. The Cuba app is a good all-round app as it has maps, accommodation, restaurants and things to do, which is really good. Number six, traveling around. Taxis in Cuba are very expensive. I'd recommend you research how much it should cost so you can negotiate a better price. I would also recommend you confirm the price before getting in. Taxi from Havana International Airport to Old Havana should cost around 30 cook. I use private taxis when taking a tour of Vinales and Trinidad. Um, it is a little bit more expensive, but you can tailor it to what you want to see and how long you want to stay at each attraction. I organise this through the castor I was staying at. Taxi Collective is another great way of travelling around. These are shared taxis which are cheaper. I used this when I was travelling from Havana to Vinales and it cost 25 cook per person. I organised this through the castor I was staying at. For longer journeys, I'd recommend you take the Viasal tourist bus as it is reliable and more comfortable. To avoid disappointment, I'd recommend you book in advance online as it is really popular. Make sure you print out um, the reservation confirmation at home and bring it with you to the Visal office about half an hour before departure so you can exchange it for your tags and tickets. Number seven, food and drink. Food quality in Cuba is mixed and I'd recommend you stick to highly rated restaurants. You can have breakfast at your casa, which is really tasty, fresh and convenient. Otherwise, in Havana, the other place I'd recommend for breakfast are Lo Demonic and El Cafe. And for dinner, I'd recommend Kilometer Zero. In Vinales, I'd recommend Three J's or Tres Jotas. It is a bit more expensive, but the pina coladas are to die for and the food is really tasty. In Trinidad, I'd recommend San Jose Restaurant. It specialised in seafood and it, again, it was really good. The common foods in Cuba are ropa vieja, which is shredded beef. They also serve a lot of rice, beans and fried plantain. You can't go to Cuba without trying the rum. Um, it's a lot cheaper to bring bottles of rum back home. Um, I had a lot of Cuba Libres, pina coladas, mojitos and daiquiris, which are really tasty. Don't drink the tap water out there and make sure you only have ice cubes from places you trust or, or tailored to tourists. Eight, safety. I felt very safe while I was in Cuba and I had no problems. Like in most places, I recommend that you don't carry lots of cash with you and keep your passport locked away in the safe. Most of the roads are dimly lit, which you may not be used to. I found the local people to be really helpful and friendly and were really eager to talk to me. Nine, scams. I didn't come across many, to be fair, but I'll just make sure you have change with you as many taxi drivers denied having change when I was trying to pay them. Also, make sure you barter and negotiate with taxi drivers. Try and knock it back by 50%. Number 10, things to bring. Comfortable walking shoes as a lot of the streets are cobbled and you'll be doing a lot of walking. Supplies are limited, so bring your necessities such as sunscreen, mosquito repellent and your medication. I'd recommend you also bring painkillers and stomach issue medication as that's quite common out there. Bring hand sanitizer and toilet roll as a lot of the public toilets won't have these necessities. Some of the public toilets didn't even have seats. Um, I'd also bring some snacks such as energy bars as it's not easy to get this sort of thing in Cuba. A nice touch is bringing some gifts for the locals. I brought pens, sweets, medicine and I even bought a football for the kids, which they loved. Thank you for watching my video, and I hope you have an amazing time. If you have any questions, please comment below. Don't forget to check out my Travel to Cuba videos. Don't forget to subscribe and like, and thank you for watching.